Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Super Soldier Talk. We are on the backup channel right now, which is unfortunate because my interview that I did with Christy Knight was deleted by YouTube, which was claiming medical misinformation. However, I she did say the V word once. I did mute it out, but that wasn't good enough. So I feel like I'm being targeted. I know I, I, I strongly believe there is some, some group there that is watching everything I'm saying. So unfortunately, I am not able to reach that audience. So we have a really amazing guest here today, John Whitberg. I'm absolutely amazed by his memory, his recall, and it's quite unfortunate that we have such amazing guest that uh, won't really necessarily have an amazing audience. Although the audience here is amazing, but <laughs> the audience over there is um, where the bulk of the list subscribers are. I'm not saying the audience members here are not amazing, but uh, the amazing amount of people is what I meant to say. So, by the way, thank you all for joining us, and um, thank you, John. So let me go ahead and read your your bio here. So John served in the secret space program under different alter names. John's alter was sent. Uh, okay, this was the Al Adam Alter, was sent to Vega Prime and then later in Solar Warden. His other Alter, Heinrich, is a German diplomatic officer who was loaned out to Deep Space Fleet Space Navy, which is another name for the JDFC, Joint Defense Force Command. During this time, and by the way, the Space Navy has uh, two, two different factions, one connected to Dark Fleet, one connected to Solar Warden. And maybe um, later on, John can explain more about that. But during this time, he was tasked with setting up new trade agreements, settling disputes, and setting up colonies within the breakaway. Heinrich was stationed on the USS Hochler, which is six miles long. His second alter, Jared, is an archaeologist in the ICC, and John believes he is still active. His other alter, so we go in this um, Adam one. So yeah, he was, that's the Solar Warden, and he was later sent over to Radiant Guardian, and then... Um, John will explain the difference between Radiant Guardian and Radiant Glory. Adam served on Europa, New Nuremberg on Titan, Victoria Colony on Mars, and on Ganymede. Adam served as an immigration officer for our solar system. Uh, so he, uh, another one of his alters, Michael, also grew up as a, a slave on Mars. In his 20s, he joined a task force with many people, including Max Spears, who was responsible for retrieving tech from different planets. This task force was operated under a warehouse in the Texan desert. In this interview, John will be discussing some of these experiences. So, welcome, John. Are you there? I'm here. You've got me blushing a little with your uh, intro. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how many years did you actually serve in the secret space program? Gosh, um... 101 close to 200 is what i've figured out so far right and uh did they actually promise to pay you any money not that i recall um i mean my understanding is that you get paid while you're there but you don't get to see a cent of it when they send you back okay um, so today's show, I think we may just start off with your Adam altar because that's connected to your childhood. And that's sort of like, a, I guess, a chronological order. It started with Adam. Then later on, you were brought into dark fleet under Heinrich. Is that how this works for you anyway? Yeah, basically. Okay. Um, so, so by the way, um, John has so much recall that we may have to do another show so he can go. Uh, more in detail, so I like to have his detail. Um, if that's okay, John, can we can we bring you on? Have maybe one or two, three shows? Hell yeah! Okay, great, great. So today we'll just uh, start off with the Adam content, and um, I guess uh, is there anything else? Uh, you know, um, in my notes here, I also want to mention that you were on Centurion, but that's probably gonna have to stay for another. So Centurion is a jungle planet, sort of like a uh, Pandora in uh, Avatar. Yeah, yeah, very similar. Because and the reason I'm even bringing this up is because I was also stationed on Centurion, but uh, it was a super soldier training camp. But in your your um, I think you said there was New Nurem, um, sorry, no, New Berlin was based as like one of the head of Dark Fleet. And yeah, competition with Mars, 
and you were stationed there. I believe you said you were archaeologist. Is that correct? No, that was in the diplomatic corps where I was on Centurion. And like, I'm actually kind of responsible for the fact that, that colony exists. Like, it's a really complicated story. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. And that was under the Heinrich altar, correct? Correct. Okay, so we may not even get into that, so we may say that for next time. But let's start off with um, maybe how you actually got recruited into this. So where do you think it? Uh, let's start with that. Where do you? Where do you? Um, where do your memories begin? Well, uh, I think you and I discussed this privately a few days ago, but I'm pretty sure my family was part of Operation Paperclip in the. 1940s. I had a great great uncle who was stationed as an intelligence officer in Germany at the end of and several years after the war. Um, and he was what it, whatever he exactly did he took to the grave but we do know he was tasked with finding family members over there which I mean to me that sounds like paperclip so yeah. All right. So your family were, were targeted. So that probably means that your parents or maybe even your grandparents might have been also in the breakaway. Oh, yeah. They were. I have memories of that. Like, yeah. Is your family very supportive of your um, coming out in public? I haven't told them. I. They wouldn't be supportive of me going public. They're supportive of me they know i have memories and they don't seem to think i'm crazy but they wouldn't be happy if they found out i was talking with people about it which is why i don't show my face so would would you consider them to be more of a handler than an actual uh parents no i wouldn't okay. they they're very good people but they were they're from a different time let's just put it that way and can you tell us about this this picture that we're looking at? Because uh, you don't want to show your your face. Why why are we looking at this? Uh, look like a, a reptilian. Those are epsilon reticulans. Uh, they are one of the good reptilian races. Um, their planet, I'm pretty sure, was actually the inspiration for Tatooine in Star Wars because it's I mean it's a desert planet with two suns. This species is known for uh, their quantum computers and stuff like that. They're one of the people who just want to trade with us and they do. Have you had contacts with them in, in your, in your lifetime? Uh, a little bit. There's, um, mm. I don't want to get this channel struck down too, but they're also kind of involved in the country that starts with a U, you know, <laughs> that one. Uh, well, there's a lot of different kinds. I, Maybe you could you could text it to me privately. But, the one um, that's been invaded by the country that starts with an R. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, how about, you know, actually, before I forget, I'm going to ask you this question, then we can go back to your experiences. Um, was the movie Star Wars actually part of the contraband, like in the, that black market? Um, yeah, it um, was. And did people ever question that that was actually made on planet Earth or they just assumed some studio in the breakaway made it? We assumed, well, I think they even told us which colony it was supposedly came from. And we didn't question that. So, yeah. Okay. And a lot of the aliens in that movie are probably based on real things, real aliens. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we had Jimmy Payne on here, and he said the uh, Ewoks were actually uh, stationed at Area 51. And, uh, yeah, he had personal interaction. And one of the Ewoks was actually in the movie, the one on the uh, the actual um, speeder in the, in the forest. That's but, uh, funny. <laughs> all right, let's go back to you. So um, do you want to – do you think a good place to start maybe when you were six years old in the portal, or is there some – or is there anything else you want to bring up before then? I think that's a good place to start. Um, that basically the portal opened in the wall of my bedroom and I was levitated through it into the back of a truck. 
uh, and we drove from my home in, at that time I was living in Colorado Springs, we drove from there to uh, Cheyenne Mountain Complex, which is where my programming happened. Uh, Mingala was there, I remember he would drug all the kids there and hypnotize us and then sit us in a room and play the Wizard of Oz on a loop for like days, literally on end, for programming purposes. But the really clear well, memories begin when I, the programming was through and we, I went to Vega. Okay, well, well, hold on. So you were actually in the, were your parents taking you to the Cheyenne complex or, or you got abducted out of your house? I got, ab I got abducted from my house. Although I did recently have a very messed up memory of my mother being forced literally at gunpoint to sign the consent forms. So. Oh, I see. So that's how they got the consent. Yeah. But that under duress, you, you th anyway. All right. Okay. So, um, so Mangala was there. Was this, was this like part of uh, a sub project of Ibis? I would say so. Yes. Um, can you, um, how, okay. How long were you actually at that facility in Cheyenne mountain? Six months, I think. All right. Approximately. And during this time they were, um, I mean, I'm asking leading questions. I'm assuming that they were doing MK ultra programming. Yes. Can you, do you have memories of what that might have entailed? I remember a lot of stuff with the wizard of Oz and with like virtual reality scenarios. Oh, and I remember going to, like, other people who are MKUltra have described this, too, like a photo-negative wedding, where, like, all the colors are reversed from what they would normally be. Like, weird stuff like that. Uh, okay. And how many other children were there, you think, with you in Cheyenne Mountain? Conservatively, 30 or 40. Do you, can you tell us of what year this might have been? 2007 uh, wow. is when I was taken. I mean, they could have moved me to any point in time, and I wouldn't know. Did, but Did you happen to see any kind of uh, German-looking um, iron crosses or black suns or swastikas? Yeah, the there, were, there were lots of swastikas, um, SS runes. It was very much a one of their outposts i would okay. say okay so um and do you actually remember mangala personally yes i do and what kind of things would he what kind of what was his personality like when he wasn't torturing you he was very sweet and yeah. which made it all the more disturbing yeah okay um, did they ever tell you why they actually picked you? No, I, I had to figure all that out. But like, like I said, I'm assuming it's because I'm of that bloodline. Like, you know. Hmm. Well, I know Mangala in the concentration camps were um, singling out uh, Jews that were starving. That actually shaped shift into a Draco because they were these particular Jews were had. Uh, draco dna and it got triggered when they were starving and they were turning around and eating other people in the camps but wow. um <laughs> yeah so there's a lot of things in history that we haven't been anyway the point is uh we could i feel like we we've actually because you got so much information um i think we should just probably go ahead and move on so how did you actually go from cheyenne complex to vega prime uh, via the moon, they had a permanently open portal in Cheyenne Mountain between that facility and the moon. Uh, and this was this was an LOC. This was some facility on the north pole of the moon. Um, and the kids, we all stepped through, or not all of us. Some of them were going other places, but some of us stepped through that um, portal. We were marched along to this uh, shuttle. I remember flying up 
over the moon to a mothership, and then that mothership then went to Vega Prime. And um, at this facility on the moon, was it also the same kind of German looking uh, iron crosses and swastikas? From the very little I saw of it, yes. Okay. Uh, did you see any other species there other than human? No. We were just, we weren't there more than 10 minutes. We were just, uh, we uh, didn't look around at all. We were walked straight through to the shuttle and then we left. Okay. All right. So, so what happens next? You're on, um, um, you're brought to Vega and what, what do they do to you? They put me in their school. The German school, uh, or Schule in German. Uh, Schule, yeah. So, um, what, uh, um, what did they tell you happened to your parents or planet Earth or what, what not? They erased my memory and they didn't really give me... I just... I just didn't have any memory before I was six years old, so I didn't really know what had happened, and like, I guess probably part, at least partly due to programming, I bounced back pretty quickly. So, yeah. All right. All right. So, did they uh, give you surrogated parents on Vega to raise you? No, it was a boarding school type scenario. Uh, all right. Okay. So, um, what were they uh, grooming you to do on Vega Prime? Just mil a military life, and then eventually, specifically, a diplomatic life. Um, there were times I would be taken, someone would wake me up in the middle of the night and take me to one of the bases on Vega Prime to meet an alien. Um, there was also uh, one time where they uh, took me to Montauk uh, and like, they, of course I thought Earth was destroyed so they didn't tell me what planet Montauk was on. But like, yes. Yeah. And like, I did a show about Montauk yesterday. Like, I'll send it to you when it comes up. But, like, there's a whole story with that. We'll have to get into some of it. But I'm sorry, I'm rambling. Go, go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, sure, certainly. I think we may need to save the Montauk stuff for later. Um, uh, and wait, how, how long were you actually at Montauk? I don't know. I, well, I was there twice. Okay. I was there um, when I was 13, and then I, Heinrich, for, when there was new management, Heinrich volunteered to be a guard there uh, to protect the kids so that stuff wouldn't happen to them again. I, we'll have to do a whole show about that someday, probably, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I understand. Okay, so well, let's go back to Vega Prime. Um, at this point, you 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 grow up there, um, and then uh, where uh, what happens next? Do you uh, do you just stay there, live out the rest of your life in Vega? No. Uh, at that point, I got um, taken to uh, Mars after I was nineteen when I got taken to Mars uh, for basic training that took a year and a half and then finally i was put on the heckler yeah so let's go back to vega prime can you describe like what it actually looks like what how big is we'll start with how big is the planet is it a water world or is it a desert or it's a super earth um i'd say it's around two and a half to two and three quarter times the size of Earth. Um, it's forested, I wouldn't say tropical. Uh, and it does have oceans. Uh, but the colony was inland. 
Hey, up in the mountains, mostly. How many people lived in the city that you were stationed at? 30 million, approximately. Wait, uh, so this is 2007. How did 30 million people um, colonize this planet? This wasn't a new colony. This was... This must have been one of the ones where they went way back in time and colonized it and then built it out from there, I'm assuming. So you don't really know too much about the history? Like how old no. it is? Okay. No, that stuff, I mean, I know I learned it when I was in the school there, but it hasn't come back to me yet. Can you tell us how many cities, um, the total population of the planet may have been? There was an American colony that had like 3 million people, I think, so not that huge, but other colonies or how many natives were there, I couldn't say, really. And what did the, did the, did the planet have like a native population? Yeah, it did. Before the, it was caught. Uh, did they look like humans or did they look like something else? They basically looked like uh, the Hindu god Krishna. Like, very human-like, but with pale blue skin. Hmm. Were the uh, natives friendly to these colonizers? Yeah, for the most part. Even though their land was being taken? We didn't take their land. They... We had a treaty. So... Yeah, I understand how those go. Yeah. Um, okay, well, I'm, I'm not here to cast judgment. Whatever they did is, is what they did, but... Can you tell us, like, what did the actual city look like that you lived in in Vega Prime? It was very much like kind of cyberpunk. Uh, it did, well, it did also have a Japanese population, but it was mostly German. Like 85% German, 10% Japanese, and 5% other stuff, I'd say. And, um, Or no, sorry, 5% other stuff. And um, there were... Uh, there was a lot of restaurants and stuff that were just below street level. Uh, that's close. Um, that one. That... Whoever drew that picture has been there at some point. Because, like... That's just too close. Um, and uh, we were... What was I saying? Oh, restaurants. Restaurants were just below street level. You were kind of supposed to minimize your time outdoors because it has a blue sun, which, like, the radiation levels were not really healthy. I mean, they weren't going to kill you or anything, but, like, they weren't ideal for us. So you so minimized your time outdoors. You would get, basically, you would get sunburn easily. Yeah. And did that happen when you went out to to the beach? To you? Uh, we, when we, you went out to the beach, you would have injections, actually, that would, like, up your tolerance artificially. Oh, Okay. We can go into we'll, we'll go we'll say that in just a bit, but continue on here. So, uh, did you actually see like uh, robots on the street? Yeah, mostly in the Japanese district. Um, they had robots cleaning the streets and like washing the windows and stuff. Did they have a red light district? Oh yeah. <laughs> did they have Android servicing models? Probably, but um, the ones I remember were real. So you, you actually um, interacted with the red light district? Yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, so well, let's go back to your um, – so you actually – okay, you were at the um, – um, at the academy. Is that when um, you were having trouble putting on the uniform? Was yeah. that the Mars Academy? No, no, that was at the Shula. Okay. So you're having trouble putting on the uniform, and what happens? 
I'm in this bathroom, and this guy, uh, Hans, who, like, uh, he, it's painful to talk about him, but, like, I will anyway, but, like, he stepped in, and he was, like, kid, I've got to take a leak, what are you, what's taking you so long? <laughs> and I was, like, I don't know how to put this uniform on, and so he helped me put it on, and, like, he was, like, 17 at the time. He had... And, like, he was stationed on this planet for life, essentially, I think. But he became, for all intents and purposes, my older brother. So, yeah. All right. And um, did uh, did you ever get, like, an adopted family or some someone that... Or, or a partner there? Hans and his parents were the closest thing to an adoptive family I had. Uh, for the most part, though, I was just at that school. And I didn't have any long-term partners at all there. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, was there... Um, I think you mentioned there was like some kind of skyscraper that was... Uh, very uh, was it like a pat 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 goda, a Japanese. Yeah, yeah okay. that that was one of the main entertainment areas in town. Um, it had. Have you ever seen Ghost in the Shell? Yeah, you know that scene at the beginning where she goes into that restaurant. Uh, and like, there they have those robot geishas who are waitresses. Yeah. The restaurant there was just like that, except it was also a rotating restaurant on the top floor of that pagoda. John, um, this going back to the question of contraband movies, um, just like there's contraband taken from planet Earth sent out there, do you think some of these movies that we have witnessed here on this planet might be from the breakaway? Yes. I think Jupiter Ascending is from the breakaway personally. So they would have totally lied about where it was filmed and all this, just made it make up a huge story. You know, but really knows the set was all secretive. Yeah. I mean, kind of thing. how are you going to prove otherwise? Like, hmm. you know, and similar like ghosts in the shell, they could probably have distribute that on that, that planet. And no one will really know. Yeah. That it was made up. Okay. Understandable. All right. So, um, so, did did you ever get assigned an apartment at, at any at any point in your life there? Uh, I did for a little under a year after I graduated. Uh, while I was basically awaiting um, my marching orders. Okay. Uh, so during this time. Um, uh, what what did you do? Just did you have a job or? Other what, while I had the apartment. Yeah. Yeah, I was a waiter um, at this German, very upscale German restaurant. And um, did they did the Germans treat you well? Better than the Americans. I've got to be honest. Like, I'm not well, saying that they're any better morally, but. Here, can you talk for just a second? Like, I need to mute yeah. myself just for a second. Yeah. Okay, so um, I think uh, what John is about to say is that uh, a lot of the marriages are, are prearranged on that planet, so that's why the uh, red light district is so um, active. But um, it seems like in that particular culture, at least within the German breakaway, that um, uh, a lot of the, um, I'm going to say the racist policies, but uh, there seems to be a, a case where they want to um, use a lot of eugenics to control <laughs> what uh, direction their, their race goes. But um, it looks like later on, they got rid of the, um, the Aryan, um, con from Aryan contacts from Aldebaran, and switched over to the Draco, and that's when they became a little bit more 
open-minded to the other races. And, um, but, uh, later on, uh, John from there, uh, see here, I guess, John, you went out to the, uh, the beach district, which is about a hundred, I think you said a hundred miles due east of the colony, main colony. And, uh, they have these, uh, what does it call them? Play, Plesiosaurus. Um, so these, uh, of course, they're extinct here on our planet, but uh, there were colonies of these creatures there. And uh, they were uh, quite dangerous to humans. So um, let's see here. How, I guess they get about maybe 12, sorry, 12 foot. Uh, I think John could probably clarify how big they actually got, but there were huge colonies of them. So they would, uh, I'm back. Yeah. We were talking, I was talking about the beach district. Yeah. I heard you. Um, and the plesiosaurs. Yeah. They're, they were around eight feet long, but they swim in huge, I guess you'd call them schools or I don't know what the collective term for dinosaurs is actually, I might have to look that up, but, <laughs> um, and they would rip you to shreds. Were um, there a lot of accidents there on that planet and that when that did actually happen? I believe in the early days, but the beach, they built a wall, um, like three miles offshore or starting from the beach and then going about three miles offshore. Uh, so you could swim there safely. You're muted. I can't hear you. Figures. Uh, yeah, let me, I'm trying to, uh, did you actually see one of these plesiosaurus in person? Yeah, I did. Uh, from the safety of a boat. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, they were just like that. Okay. All right. Um, well, so, uh, so I guess that was a very popular district. Um, so what else did you do for fun on the, on the planet? Uh, well, there was, there was a lot of cultural entertainment. Um, there were a lot of museums, um, a lot of like theaters, both movie theaters and uh, stage theaters. And like, I remember one of the, the main theater was in the, in that pagoda building. And I remember watching like opera and like kabuki theater type stuff in there. Oh, and there was a swimming pool. Uh, supposedly the biggest one in all of the breakaway that was there that uh and how big was it uh three square miles it was huge like was it in a biodome it was underground hmm. uh i wouldn't say a biodome per se and was that also a very popular tourist district yeah okay okay and um is this um where uh new, is this is new atlantis located on this planet no that's on a whole other planet um okay well all right well we can save that for for later but um what else do you want to share about vega gosh um just that like i it's hard to explain to people, but like, I feel homesick for it. Like I grew up there before I grew up here, you know, like. Okay. Um, well, what about your apartment? What was, what did it actually look like? It was in one of those skyscrapers. It wasn't, uh, to quote another whistleblower, it looked like, um, it had been designed by Ikea. <laughs> it had like, it was pretty boring, honestly. Like, very ultra modern. 
did you have any robots in your apartment? No, no, I was nowhere near that rich. Did you ever uh, see the, the rich area? I did. They lived. Um, they lived more in the coastal areas, actually, and they had um, mansions, like huge mansions, along the coast. And they had their own private, like, walled-off beaches all to themselves, and like, yeah. Did do, do the uh, Cabal also have? Um, mansions there like the Rothschilds and Soros those folks I don't believe those folks were allowed on this particular planet so this is like a German breakaway yes okay so that would be Prussian nobility yes elites from that era maybe maybe um, before we can uh, go on to what happened next I guess on Mars you can talk a little bit about the uh, the actual quickly um, what happened is during the period of what, 18, when did they actually get the, oh, oh, so it was portal tech. They got access to portal tech around 1840. The, yeah. The nobility. Yeah. My memories of that are still fuzzy. Um, I think that that's, I'm pretty sure this is like Montauk related stuff too, but like they somehow, I believe that it was through like archaeology. They found portals and they found also they came in contact with inner earth beings at that time and they started their colonial endeavors. And that's also the uh, the Ar Aryans from Aldebaran. Yeah. Which, which taught them the uh, the racist policy um philosophies, but they also um, so from the 1840s, they started using the call, um, the portals to colonize other planets, including Mars. In, yes. And uh, um, can you comment? Uh, was Mars actually like a tropical planet back in the 1840s? No, not in this. I, I've seen uh, your show about that. I'm I'm not disputing that maybe there is a timeline where that happened, but it wasn't in the one I experienced. Okay. Did you actually go back to Mars in the 1840s? Yeah. And what and, what was it like back then, the early breakaway? Rough. Like very rough living. So um, there were no there were no mansions, there were just people just trying to survive. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So from that period, that era eventually, um, and by the 1920s, they got access to some of the flying craft and then also uh, time travel tech and then they took it the breakaway a lot further so, such as vega prime and mm -hmm. many other worlds yeah and, and how many planets do you think there are in the breakaway approximately ten thousand. and um what do you think is the total human population i guess you could say terrans from planet earth that were yeah. brought here i I'm not sure when, what time period it was, but the last memory I have of it is 9.6 trillion. So 9.6 trillion people are all, basically pretty much all of them been told planet Earth is no longer around? Pretty much, yeah. And that and That's what they taught you in Vega Prime as well yep. in the schools? Mm-hmm. And how were, why would people actually believe it? Why not to just go take a ship to the, to the location where planet Earth is? We're in a restricted zone. No one comes in or out without very special authorization. So, we, uh, and there is, like, I need to write in, I did mention some of this in one of my articles, but there is actually a disclosure movement out there, just as there is here. Well, uh, let's see here. You said there was some kind of, was it Japanese or Korean? She's Vietnamese. Uh, um, Vietnamese? Or Vietnamese American woman who's essentially the breakaway answer to Alex Jones. Which yeah. is funny to imagine, but yeah. Well, do you think there's a way we can smuggle some of our interviews over to her? I've, uh, <laughs> 
I've communicated with a guy out there because, like, I'm a clear audience. I've communicated with someone's altar out there, and he says it's already happened. So, do you think like some of these whistleblowers out there have got access to the, our internet here? Yeah. Huh. So let's just say these 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 videos were smuggled out into Mars Net or whatever they they call their internet out there. Um, so you, you think people will still not believe it? They'll think it's all fake made up. I mean, that's what most people here think about so-called conspiracy theories, isn't it? Like, yeah, you're yeah. right. So, but there well, is a minority of people who do believe it. And there is a movement for disclosure just like there is here. So, um, so we can also let's also discuss a little bit about what do they actually show the people like like in the textbooks? Do they show planet Earth being destroyed? Have pictures, black and white pictures, or whatever from the? Yeah, they do. They show pictures of Earth without an at, where the, all the atmosphere is gone, and it looks basically like a moon. Yeah. So what they actually did, there was an alternate timeline where there was a cobalt bomb that. Uh, I think it was in 1952 where it took place and, the, and it was built by the cabal to kill off the Germans in Antarctica, but they didn't realize how powerful it was. So it destroyed all life. So what they did is they took pictures from this other alternate reality and are, and are displaying it as if it happened there in their, in our reality. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Well, let's move on. So tell us what happens next. Uh, well, is there anything else about Vega you would like to share? I can't think of anything really. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, well, how about the religion? Did uh, were there Christian churches or mosques, synagogues? No, there were Norse temples. Uh, it was one of the, the German breakaway for the most part. I mean, there are some colonies where they do allow Christianity, but for the most part, it's very much taboo. And the only thing you can openly practice is Norse stuff. So, did you yeah. ever uh, participate in any of their ceremonies? Uh, yeah, occasionally. Like, I wasn't a believer, but like, there were times I kind of had to for diplomatic reasons. Like, you know, like when you go to is when a president goes to Israel they all will pray at the Wailing Wall, even though we've never had a Jewish president. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you, didn't you say there was some kind of blood ritual involved that they, they conduct in that religion? The, the elites do. With like DMT and orgies? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of variations on it. There's one where they, We'll do like blood sacrifices, uh, the elites will, and because they don't want the karma of actually permanently killing someone, they will regenerate that person, and a lot of the slaves who don't normally have access to regeneration tech will try to actually sell themselves to be sacrificed so that then they can be put in the regenerator. It's really messed up. And then they do they also give the slave freedom? They usually say they're going to, uh, whether they do or not. <laughs> you know. Okay. Like, um, sometimes, like sometimes. I, I knew the like the Draco were involved. They would what they would do is they would project their consciousness into gray bodies, and they would have an orgy in these gray bodies, and then um, kill each other. Um, hmm. A blood sacrifice so uh they there i guess theoretically that could also take place but yeah. um yeah so when they would do these D, with this dmt and these sacrificial stuff were they actually calling in entities yeah they were uh um, they're they're not good ones no they were calling for like odin and the norse gods but they had a very different interpretation of how those gods were they saw them basically as like it's sort of like a weird chimera of 
Luciferianism and Asatru or Norse religion. Like, I'm not sure how they came about to have this stuff, but yeah, they did. Huh. It almost seems like uh, maybe a connection out of um, the area where, like, Kazaria, where they were doing Baal worship um, and uh, sacrificing children to uh, bring these entities in. That's entirely possible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, so, but the average person there is basically non religious. Were they, were they a a atheistic or agnostic? They were. They were like those people who went who go to church once or twice a year. Pretty much, oh. okay. like they didn't necessarily believe anything, but like for tradition's sake, they would go to the temple during major festivals. You know. Did you ever go to any of those festivals? Yeah, I did. Uh huh. Um. Do they have alcohol there? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. And uh, do they actually like make their own alcohol, or they like replicate it? Uh, there's there's a planet called Corellia that's known for its distilleries. Uh, they have really good whiskey, like w like really good whiskey. Um, and there's some planets where they'll make like mead or beer, and I'm sure they could get vodka. What about what about imports from planet Earth? Did you ever witness any uh, alcohol imported from? I guess not, they were not in the German colonies. In the American ones, yes. Mm -hmm. How about um, access to coffee and uh, what is it? The other one. So coffee is like a narcotic out there. Yeah, um, it is. Uh, but so th did they have access to it? Yeah, it's not like a narcotic to us. It. It is to certain aliens, so. Yeah. So, uh, do they um do they grow their own coffee on the planet, or do they have to import it? I think they could grow it. I think I'm pretty sure they did grow it. Like. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, so we got the coffee and uh, what else? Uh, what about? Did you actually have a replicator inside your in your apartment? Yeah, I did. Um. Not a very good one. <laughs> well, did it? Did it make like uh, chocolate cake for you? Yeah, it could, but it wasn't very good chocolate cake. But it was way better than what I had to get used to on the ship. So, hmm. yeah. Did uh, did the rich and elite have a better replicator? You think? I'm sure. Yeah. Why did they? Um, if they have like this advanced, if they have replicator tech, couldn't they just use a replicator to make everybody really nice replicators? Why do they have to have this division? Everything out there is a tiered, merit-based system. If you play the game correctly, you then you're going to live real nice. But if you don't, then you're not going to do as well. Or you're going to be at the bottom of the barrel. All right. So um, I guess maybe at this point, are you ready to move on to what happens next? Yeah. Okay, so so from Vega Prime, uh, what happens? Um, how do they tell you? I mean, who tells you it's time to move on? I was sitting in a cafe. Uh, this was the day after I turned 19. Sitting in a cafe, uh, and this girl in an SS uniform carrying, like, papers, which is kind of strange, but actual papers walks up to me. And it's uh, my orientation packet for uh, MDF, the MDF Academy, uh, even though I wasn't in MDF, but they do use their academy for other groups. So, yeah. And then th two or three days later, I'm not sure which, I was shipped off to Mars. So, uh, did you actually go through a portal to get to Mars, or did they actually put you on a vessel? They put me on a vessel. Okay. Uh, and via, it, it used hyperspace, and it was around 18 hours from Vega to Mars. Okay. How many other people were with you on the ship? Gosh. 
hundreds. I mean, they'd been from planet to planet picking up other new recruits. So there was. And a was this actually like Dark Fleet? Oh, wait, this would have been Solar Warden. No, this was Dark Fleet. Um, oh, okay. This. Uh, this was Dark Fleet. This is Heinrich I'm talking about, and he's Dark Fleet. And, like, we... Then we went to Mars, uh, to Ares Prima slash Neuberlin. People are disputed over what to actually call that place, but... Yeah. Um, and uh, this is in the Victoria Crater? No, no. This was... This was about three or four miles west of Olympus Mons. This was a totally different part of Mars. The Victoria Crater was Solar Warden headquarters. Okay. And presumably still is. Okay, so how, uh, how old were you when, when you were taken to, uh, to the uh, Mars Defense Force Academy? 19. All right. And how long were you actually at the Academy? Year and a half. Hmm. When you were at the academy, did they ever take you into this uh, room where they would take a picture of your aura once a week to use that as a means to reaging you later on? I'm pretty sure they already had all that info. Cause, uh, okay. Okay. Because uh, we have a super tech DSF. He was at the Mars Academy, and he said they would take these this aura photo of him every week, and then after the end of his service, they would recompile or – decompile all that um, information and slowly re-age him back to where he was and then send him back in time. But um, Well, I mean, it's possible, and I just don't remember it. Like, I don't remember everything. He also was given injections on a weekly basis, some kind of red goo. Um, I don't know. Do you remember, get, did they give you regular injections there to enhance your IQ? They gave me stuff to enhance my telepathic abilities. Um two injections one was a white goo and one was like this like foggy clear liquid and those would one of those made me more compliant and the other one enhanced my telepathic abilities they didn't tell me which was which okay were they training you to be an officer yes and a diplomat, because this is, I mean, this is the diplomat, but everyone has a military training, too. Mm -hmm. And as an officer, were you required to drink black goo? I was forbidden from it as a diplomat. Uh, because it would reduce my intuitive empathic capabilities. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so, um, um, during this, uh, how many people do you think are, um, are at the Mars Academy in any particular, um, time? Thousands. I mean, my, my graduating class had around 1500, but of course there were other classes coming and going all the time. So tons of people were there. Okay. Um, Conser conservatively, I'd say 10,000 at any given moment. What other type of programs did they teach at the Mars Academy? Training programs? Everything you can imagine. Uh, I mean, I had diplomatic training alongside military. Uh, there was spy stuff. Uh, I There was... One person I remember there being trained as a honeypot. Um, like, or like sex. Yeah. Every military application thing was trained for there. Okay. Uh, so they also probably had super soldiers there too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about archaeologists? No, actually, that was a different place. This okay. was a. It, this is very much a military academy. I should make that clear. Oh, but, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so um, did you enjoy your time at the academy? It was all right. <laughs> okay. It wasn't, it was by far not, it, it was by far better than some other places. 
were they very, did they have a very strict German um, philosophy where if you, uh, you make a mistake, they slap your hit um, wrist with a ruler? Yeah. And so that, that probably happened to you. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, at the military academy, you'd probably get brig time. Like, they were very strict. Okay. All right. So um, they were training you to be this diplomat. And what were your what were your responsibilities and duties as a diplomat? Uh, basically, uh, how to talk to people and not get everyone killed. <laughs> is the simplest way to put it. Um, we did, and like, I remember training on all sorts of different aliens that would come in and like me and the fellow diplomats would have to learn how to communicate with them because every mind is different, right? Like, there's, some are really easy and it's like, just like you and me having a conversation. Some of them, it's, nearly impossible but you can do it eventually and i also had to learn like about history stuff and about planets and like i did have military training so that like if i had to if shit hit the fan like i could take care of myself understood okay so um I guess, um, did you ever have any interaction with, like, say, like a T-Rex type creature? Not at the Academy. Yeah. I did later on. That's an interesting story, but... Oh, okay. Do you want to... So where, where would you want to go that, right now? Do you want to go into the T-Rex thing, or you want to just continue on here? Uh, I can talk about the T-Rex real quick, and then we can yeah. come back to the Academy, because, like, I'm sure everyone's ears are perking up right now. <laughs> Like, um, there's a station, uh, I sent you some stuff about it called the Valhalla. It's that big spinning wheel one. It was in Orion for a very long time, but recently they moved it to the Pleiades, uh, for whatever reason. And I went there a lot, but, uh, whenever... It, God, stop interfering, whoever is interfering. I'm trying to think. Oh, right after they moved it, it got attacked by these. They looked like a mostly humanoid body, but with the head of a T-Rex. Um, and they were around 20 feet tall. And they hated us. They detest humans like they're worse than the Draco, in my opinion. There's just not as many of them. The Draco see us as slaves. These T-Rex creatures see us as cockroaches. So every every species out there have used us as different purpose. Like, for instance, you said the tall whites see us. They look down on us, but they see us as useful. Yeah. Right. And some species see us as food. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. um, but um, so but typically... These T-Rexes don't even see us as worth the trouble of eating. Like, they would, they just want us completely to not exist. I yeah. don't know what we've done to them in the past to deserve that, but, yeah. Yeah. Um, thank you, John. Uh, so, and I guess, what about, like, the uh, xenomorphs, like, in the alien movies? Is that, with that, what, does that creature really exist out there in the breakaway? Yeah, they do, and they're actually very friendly. So they they turn it on to some creepy story. Yeah. Okay. They look scary, so they decided we'll make something scary about them. But they're not. When you actually talk to one of them, they're one of the friendliest ones I've interacted with, actually. Uh. So what? They got like a sense of humor. Yeah, they do. They very much do. And uh, they. Also, even if they were really dangerous, they don't live on planets like ours. I mean, they can't. They're sulfur-dependent extremophiles. Yeah, they so live, they need, they need they, to be near volcanoes. Yes, they live on places like Io, around Jupiter. And 
sulfur rich volcanic planets. So, all right. Okay. Well, um, so there you have it. So that, so uh, do you think the aliens movie also got it as part of the, the breakaway as the contraband was, uh, really Scott's, uh, alien. It's very possible. Yeah. Okay. So let's, uh, and by the way, that corporation, was it, uh, you, you, Tommy, um, forgot what they call that one, but, uh, Wayland, Wayland, you, Tommy is apparently that's all that that's all real. Wow. Yeah. That's a uh, breakaway, but, um, and, uh, you know what, we actually got a list of some, some of these corporations in the breakaway. Um, you wrote that up a different, what you remember. Yeah. Um, so I'll try to look for that, but why don't, while I look that up, why don't you go us and tell us what happens next from your, so you're in the Mars core and where do they station you next? On the U.S. I'm sorry, you were on the MDF. Yeah, um, Mars Academy. So go ahead. Yeah, it's okay. That's when I went to the USSS or U Triple S Heckler, uh, and I did my diplomatic service. Um, going, I describe it as sort of the German equivalent of Montauk, but in space, kind of. Because, like, we were, basically what we were doing was going throughout the timeline from planet to planet, making deals and such so that things would work out for the Germans. So, it, although I would much rather be in that than at Montauk, and I speak from experience, but again, we'll get into that another time, but, um, there so i've got lots of weird and crazy stories about planets i've been to like sometimes i would even go onto a planet and like i would live with the natives for a while for some like several weeks or sometimes like a couple of months even uh just scouting the place out and also like having them get used to having a human around. So the goal was to introduce, uh, introduce the humans to the natives, get them to, to like you. And then uh, the other team would come in and start taking over resources. Yeah. Pretty much. Were there ever, was there ever any point there was revolts and it didn't go as planned all the time. And uh, w w so what were some of the grievances the other the natives had with you showing up? Uh, well, we have quite a reputation out there. So if they're at all spacefaring, they know about us. And unless they're like us, unless they're doing similar stuff, they don't want anything to do with us most of the time. Um so there would be grievances about how we take slaves both from our own people and from other species and how like we're responsible for genocides like true stuff like i'm not going to deny it yeah wow well let me share i found that it was actually my powerpoint so let's see here um I guess oh I can yeah that. So this was a list compiled by you, you helped me compile this, or really it's really mostly your I guess you wrote this. But um let's see, maybe I can if I see can you see the is that better? Can you see it? Yeah. Better that way? Okay. So we've got Northrop Grunham. Um so these are all uh, corporations that are in the breakaway that you recalled. Yes. So we got Northrop Grunham, and of course they're based here on planet Earth, but they make <laughs> cargo, not cargo, cargo ships. And then we've got Raytheon, Planetary Defense Technology, Aegis, which is smart suits. And uh, that's based here on planet Earth, too. Mm -hmm. he Heckler and Coke, Plasma Firearms. So are they, are they based here on planet Earth? Yeah. yeah. They're, yeah. They're, okay. they're a gun company here, too. Okay. So that means the executives probably know, like the CEO knows about this breakaway branch. Uh, probably, yeah. Wow. But your average employee knows absolutely nothing. 
Okay, so we have a company like Ma Mondelez. 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 So they prepackage food and but they make food they also make food replicators. Yes. So do you think they have they're they're using food replicators on planet Earth to make food and selling it as real food? I wouldn't be surprised. It's entirely possible. Okay, so but so there are replicators that are good enough to make it really real. Yeah, there are. Okay. Uh Sitgo, which is um petroleum company but off world it does asteroid mining mm -hmm. and, and that's, uh, that's yeah. another connection my father my grandfather worked for them for nearly 50 years on earth and quite possibly off planet as well but yeah and what were the, i'm so they're not really mining petroleum probably out there because it's not not like they use petroleum to move their craft around no so, so what are they mining you think Mostly the biggest things are diamonds and gold um, and uh, titanium. Diamonds and gold. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we've also got Boeing, which is involved in planetary transport, cigar-shaped craft. Mm -hmm. um, PepsiCo. So PepsiCo makes drinks that are loaded with nanite tech that gives you psionic abilities like telekinesis, strength, and even new languages. Yep. Did you ever partake of any of those drinks? Yeah, I did. I People are going to laugh at this, but like I did take one once. I was going to a Russian colony to work, and I didn't speak Russian, so I drank a Coke that had nanites that instantly downloaded the Russian language into my head. Like, So does that mean... It's it's still retained with you? No. That was a clone body. Like uh, that wasn't even quote okay. unquote me. Are these abilities temporary? I don't think so unless you have them have the nanites removed. Yeah. And uh was it like was it like really expensive to get these special co cocktails? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Okay, do you think um, PepsiCo puts nanite tech in their drinks here on planet Earth? Maybe like black goo or something. I don't think they do the stuff that they do out there. Hmm. And also, I guess the, the CEO of the company and the executives, they, they're all aware about the breakaway too. Yep, they probably have houses out there somewhere. Huh. Okay, so uh, Theodore and Marshall and Company, off-world shipping. So this is one, the one on this list that does not exist on planet Earth. Yeah. Off-world yeah. shipping. So they're they're almost like a FedEx. Yeah, basically they're like interstellar Amazon. <laughs> and does FedEx exist off-world? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Okay. Um. What about the uh, what's what's the other one? Um, not FedEx, UPS. Not that I'm aware of, but like I, they could, they easily could, and I just don't know about it. Okay, so we also got BlackRock on this list. Now BlackRock is the world's largest real estate company. Mm hmm. So, but you're saying that real block the 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 company here on planet Earth that's only a small portion of its total assets. Yeah. Yeah. So. So this whole thing about BlackRock going bankrupt because of bad deal, this and that, it's probably all bullshit because it doesn't. Their company is so big, it doesn't. It doesn't even matter. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, uh, see, a lot of people in the dis this disclosure community that don't watch the Secret Space Program stuff really have no, don't really understand the the mechanics of what's going on here. Yeah, I know it's unfortunate, but yeah. Uh, so we also got uh, Monarch on this list. Did you ever have it, which is mercenary and biotech? Yeah. What What is going on with Monarch? I haven't interacted with them that much, but I just know that nobody really likes them <laughs> uh, for good reason. Although I do have my archaeologist, Alter, he actually does work for them, but he's seemingly unaware of the terrible shit so 
Yeah. 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 I have a scientist altar that works for Monarch. Um, I haven't worked on recovering the memories on this and shoreline. I also worked for shoreline as well as a security base security and VIP bodyguard service, yeah. super soldier. Did you have interactions with shoreline? Yeah, I had them. There were times I had one of their people escorting me um, and they guard most of the main bases, particularly yeah. so solar warden bases. Even uh, probably like area 51 here on planet earth. Probably. Yeah. Um, all right. And Shoreline is featured in the Uncharted video game series. Some soft disclosure. Hmm. Um, and Monarch is also featured in another uh, video game series. I think it's Quantum Break, if I'm not mistaken, with Paul Serene and all that. Yeah. Uh, so we got uh, Vanguard, and Paul Serene runs Monarch. But um, Vanguard stands for Colonial Acquisitions. They run this planet and they acquire land for colonies. Yep. Uh, they have. They'll go, and if the people... One of the differences between the ICC and the Germans is that the ICC does not build their own stuff. Most of the cities they have were originally alien cities that they came across and liked the look of. And what Vanguard will do is, they have this some kind of biological bomb that they will drop it, and within a matter of minutes, it will kill all biological life forms within a couple of minutes, but do no damage to the structures. And then they drop another one that neutralizes that, and then they can just move in. So, yeah, they're responsible for a lot. Um, so, But this bomb wouldn't be like destroying the whole planet, just this area around the where they want to build the colony. Yeah. And... Um, as far when that takes place, do they actually put a magnetosphere to cover up the, the, the colony to protect it from the atmosphere? I mean, plenty of planets have breathable atmospheres, so it depends on what planet. Wow. Okay. Um, so, all right. So let's move on here. When Nintendo makes virtual reality learning programs, what, what, are, what is that? Um, when I was in Shula, they had that, uh, I just remember the Nintendo logo being on the virtual reality headset that I used uh, to learn things. And not everything I learned was virtual reality, by the way, like languages and uh, cultural stuff was learned with a, with a teacher, but other stuff was VR. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, um, do they actually have, can you tell us the name of the internet out there? No, I'm sorry. Names, hmm. names for whatever reason have been very heavily erased. Yeah. Can, um, so did you actually, did you have get onto it at any point? Oh, oh yeah. All the time. Did, um, is there actually websites out there that have information about planet earth? Still existing? Yeah. Like, I talked mm -hmm. a little earlier about, like, the breakaway Alex Jones. Her website is called Truth Media Now. Uh, and it's wow. basically, it's basically like their version of InfoWars. Like, <laughs> it, yeah, there's, they do have, oh. like, a conspiracy side of their internet, just like we do. And the elites tolerate it? Yeah. They do. Huh. Because, I mean, okay. people would, if they didn't allow anyone to question anything, then people would actively rebel. They allow people to question some stuff, but they don't give them the power to do anything about it. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Or like what we see on here on planet Earth. Yeah. Yeah, we're powerless. But what are we going to do? We can talk about the secret space from all day, and then we have a bunch of trolls come on here and just laugh. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, okay, so where, where are we at? So we just, we went to, oh, and Wayland Corporation. So did you actually have interactions with Wayland? You, not, you that, not that I recall. Okay. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on. So you were in the diplomatic corps. Um, what, uh, so you were responsible for negotiating, getting new colonies. And then I guess at this point, do you want to go into Centurion? Or, sure. or do you, 
Sure, we can go into Centurion. That was in 1915. We went back in time to 1915 to create that one. And um, I have that picture. I don't know if you can find it now, but of that big white city. Uh, and it doesn't look exactly like that picture, but that was the closest I could find. Um, and that was originally, it was built by the Arcturians, actually, but they had abandoned it at some point. So it was really quite a find for us, finding that mostly intact city uh, just kind of sitting there. And so we negotiated to get a hold of it, and we were successful. I'm sorry, I got so many links open. I'm trying to. Oh, I see. Yeah, so we got Centaur. Yeah, this was um, this drawing is actually I think is Alderbarn, Alderbarn, or what? Alder. Yeah. Alderaan, yeah, in Star Wars. Yeah, so, that's disclosure, I guess. So does that planet really exist out there? Maybe. Huh. All right. It's possible. Yeah. So um, this, if you want to learn more about Centaurian, you can click on my website and go to this link. Uh, it's called Centaurian Alpha Centauri Major German Stronghold. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think you said there were, like, parrots that are, like, five foot why is it not showing? I guess there are parrots that are like five foot tall. Five foot wingspan. Um, so, yeah, there were big parrots there. The native inhabitants are really creepy to look at. They're a type of, I mean, they look like grays, but their, their skin looks like ours. It's the same color. So they look like they basically look like bald, naked people, but they have solid eyes and no external genitalia. They're very, like, uncanny valley. <laughs> okay. All right. So the planet is another super Earth. It's also, I think he said, is it five times bigger or even more than that? Well, I've, I've delved into this memory. It's about the size of Saturn, and that's because it's not actually technically a planet. It's a Dyson sphere that they colonized the outer, the outside of, or I mean, they terraformed the outside of like many millions of years ago. So for all intents and purposes, it is a planet, but also it's technically not, you know, since Centurion is a Dyson sphere. Yes. Uh, did you go inside? No. Okay. Wow. Okay. So the outside. All right. And, um, so you're negotiating this colony and they made you drive. I think you said they had to drive six feet, six, six hours and because they didn't want you on the road. Yeah. I don't know who made that decision or why or what was going on, but like we had like a log cabin type of lodge area that someone, we just kind of built it as quick as we could for our time there. And we had a jeep, and we had to drive six hours through the jungle. But, like, the com one of the commanding officers was like, screw this. We're driving on the actual paved road. So, we did. Oh. Uh, and, okay, but why would... Why do you think they want you to go through the jungle and not on the paved road to begin with? I don't know. Mm -hmm. And why did they, like, put you on this lodge so far away from where the meeting place is? Again, I don't know. That's just how things worked out. Okay. And this, this Centurion planet was really Draco territory, right? Yeah. And as Draco territory, were there a lot of, um, like, strings attached to get this to colony? Yes. The negotiations yeah. took months. Uh how do you negotiate? I mean, with a, Dra with a Draco that wants to basically eat you. They eat didn't. You. They didn't want to eat us. I mean, we were. We were all. I mean, as diplomats, we were all Draco hybrids. So I mean, they kind of saw us as like, at least a little bit as one of them. 
Like oh. they had, they respected us. Like. Okay. So they eventually got this colony set up in 1915, which later grew into this huge steampunk, no, not steampunk, cyberpunk type city. Yep. Uh, do you remember the name of the city on the main, that main city there? That was New Berlin, the other New Berlin. Okay. Okay. Yep. And um, I and I was stationed on Centurion on one of the uh, super soldier training camps. Mm -hmm. um, and we would sneak away into the, um, into the to the waterfalls, and there's a lake there where we would mess around with the opposite sex. But um, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, and then I didn't get in trouble. They they I think pretty much people knew what was going on. <laughs> anyway, the point is, uh, it was a beautiful planet. Uh, I guess, like I said, Centurion, um, I'm sorry, now, um, Pandora based in Avatar is what that scene will be like, except you can't actually breathe the atmosphere. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we're all the, we're all the wildlife and creatures huge as well. The trees and the animals. Yeah. Okay. All right. And, uh, you said that there was on the city, uh, what did you say? New Nuremberg? No, New Berlin. Berlin. So wasn't it the the elites there? They were all drinking black goo. It was like even worse there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And did you actually go to that city? Yeah, I did. That. There's a lot of. Excuse my language, but fucked up shit that happens there. Um. There. That's one of the places where slavery is out in the open. Black goo is out in the open. I walked into a temple by complete accident, and there was... I don't want to get this channel banned, so I'm not going to say what was happening in that temple, but yeah. It was that bad. All right. Okay, and there was also another city in the southeastern hemisphere, an uh, ancient crystalline city from the Builders race, I guess. Yeah, I remember very little about that place, but I think that was also like a very elite area. Okay. And we also got there was archives of files, including bio this is hidden behind multiple biometric locks. Yes. So you got access to this database and that that showed you basically everything in the breakaway? Yes. And there was archival footage we were looking through and that's a whole other story that honestly I'd rather not talk about alone because it's not just my memory. But you want to come back and just share what's in this database? I can share a little bit. We watched like archival footage. I remember seeing stuff of like early colonies um, of like battles uh, in. Uh, on Mars and Titan and places like that, but also of like laboratory stuff, like Mengele type stuff, like botched genetic experiments and uh, tortured people, all that fun stuff, you know. Okay, and um, was there records on uh, H I T L E R? That uh, show that he w went off into the breakaway. Did you ever look into mm. any of that? We, I was there for personal reasons, uh, and it was that wasn't relevant, so I didn't look for that. But I have no, I no doubt that there is that info there. Do you have any idea what happened? It, it, uh, was that is that information known in the breakaway? What yeah. Yeah. What, what can you tell me? He's still alive. He's on Titan. He has a mansion on Titan, or really more of a palace on Titan. That's it's in kind of a Spanish revival style ma mansion. That's one of his houses. He probably has more than one, but yeah. Is he still um, really high up in the breakaway? Yes, but he's not the leader anymore uh, I don't know who fewer. is that's yeah, under wraps yeah the fewer okay okay well um did you actually have any interactions with him 
No, not that I remember. I mean, I could have at some point, and I don't remember it. Well, I mean, he would he would have to be probably like what 140, 150 years old by now. Yeah. So they so it's like an Elysium where they have their own med beds and their palaces, and they can just re 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 age themselves as much as they want. Yeah. I remember meeting one guy on Mars who was two thousand years old. Like and he's a he's a human. Yeah. He and was it, part of he was part of the breakaway. Like Okay, so he's not like enhanced human, but he's been through the bed beds repeatedly. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Do do they have technology where they can um use um MR mm, I don't even want to say it, but let's say they can genetically modify humans to live like we used to, um, a hundred thousand years in Atlantis, can they restore all that out there in the breakaway? I don't know. Yeah, so it's, oh, it's all good. Yeah. So let's see here. So Centurions also home to numerous ancient sites. I have faint memories of living in some type of camp in the jungle. Remember digging for these gold-plated boxes and scrolls? Oh yeah, that was. I think that's a Montauk thing um, where I was, because I was young. I was like 13 or 14. Like I was really young and they had me in a camp and like if I found something, I would get rewarded. If I didn't, I would get put in the electric chair. No. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That doesn't sound like a very pleasant existence. No, no, it was not. Okay. Sorry you had to go through that. Um, but I guess there's a bunch of people out there that need to get liberated. Yeah, it's okay. Like Right. A number of the various corporations that are breakaway also have present Centurion. It's one of the planets that used to showcase the planetary defense grid invented by Rayathon. This network of satellites which have missiles, they are designed to stop any projectiles which may be hurled at the planet from orbit. Kruger also has a base of Centurion, many elite breakaway families. Live on Centurion, so that probably explains why I was there because I was part of Kruger Corps. Mm -hmm. um, the Rothschilds, the Serenes, the Marshals, the Theodore Marshall is that the Marshals of Theodore Marshall? Yes, okay, and they're probably all palaces. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're like have, have you, they, they live in palaces that are the size of a small town, like it's hard to even imagine how huge these people's houses are. like. So they're living like this while they're slaves building Centurion. Yep. How can these people live with themselves like that when they know there's so much inequity in society? Don't they feel I, bad for what happens to the, the slaves? And the, I'd like to think so, but they don't feel bad enough to change it, apparently. And um, are they also all infected with black goo? Probably most of them, yeah. All right. Well, there you got Centurion. So we're about an hour and a half into this. Um, are you are you good to keep going, or do you want to stop? Uh, let's go. We can go a little more. Like, I don't know if anyone in the audience has any questions or anything. Like, yeah. Okay, audience members, if you have some good questions to ask our guest, I will <laughs> share them on here. But um, so I guess we're are we pretty much so we're done with the Centurion information here. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm gonna, you know what I could do is, um, let's go back to the Mars, the Mars core. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how to do this. To insert, oh, I can add music. Um, there was uh the song from was it Gustav Holst? Yeah. Mars. So is that the one they they had in the Mars core? They at the I'm sorry the um not Mars. The academy. Why, the, the academy uh, graduation song was from. Is that music? Is that correct? Yes, no, it's Holst, Gustav Holst, Jupiter, not Mars. Um, oh. Uh, Gustav Holst, Jupiter. Um, if you look that up. Yeah, it was that. That was their anthem, the, the Academy's anthem. Why do you think they would play Jupiter, not Mars? I don't know. Well... There is, in Britain, there is a British patriotic song that also uses Jupiter. So I think maybe we just had a German version of that. So, I don't know. 
Uh, yeah, so I'm playing some of the track. I don't think this is going to hit a copyright strike with this if I do this. No, it's over 100 years old. I... Yeah, it's classical. So this is Jupiter. And they said, uh, I think uh, Penny Bradley said uh, they all got up in class and started crying because I guess they were showing, what, pictures of planet Earth being destroyed and here you are. Is that what it was like? Uh, yeah, well, they were showing more like patriotic stuff. Okay. It like it still makes me kind of emotional to hear it, even though like I have no patriotism yeah. for this group of people anymore. But like, it still the programming is still in there, you know. So the other song is this East German. Um, what what did you say? The, the East German anthem. Yes, Auf Verstanden aus Ruinen. Like, are you still fluent in German? No, no. Okay. Well, I'm going to play a little clip of this, and we're going to listen for a, a few seconds. Um, so I guess you can hear it? Yeah. Okay. So this is off... Oh, I'm not going to pronounce it. So the, wh where would they play this music? Um, everywhere, on the ship, and in the academy. We, we sang it at the graduation ceremony as well. Um, but this is the uh, the communist anthem. Yeah, on earth it is. But like... I have this theory that maybe East Germany was the German breakaways branch on earth. Look at their... Um, I know on that song, they show the East German flag and it has a sextant on it. Yeah, okay, I'll try to pull this up. Um, a sextant. That's yeah. something you would use to find your way home using the stars. So, I mean, like, is that really a coincidence? I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, hold on. I got so many witnesses. I'm trying to get the. Uh, yeah, this is what happens in a one man band here. But okay, we got. Okay, we got. Uh, there you go. Can't hear you. Can't hear it. It's not. You don't hear it. John, are you still there? John. Okay, well, I guess you you know, audience member, you got the right idea. I IP. can't hear you, James. You can't hear me at all. Uh, can you hear me now? John, can you hear me? See, he's um, he muted himself. John, you muted yourself. Okay, well, I'm not sure what. Maybe I think we're going to get in trouble with YouTube at playing <laughs> I think what well, well, are you still there, John? You're muted. You're, can you unmute yourself? Because I can't really, I can't do it. Oh, I see. He must be. There, he must be. Um, he probably needs to go now. Um, I'll give him a few, um, maybe another 20, 30 seconds here, and then we'll probably shut this down. Um, so, questions from audience members. Um, maybe there's something I can answer. Let's see here. From uh, New Mexico tumbleweed. Are there any timelines? I can't hear you, James. I'm you're muted or something. I'm not. Um. Look, not if you can hear me. I I can. Okay. I'm not okay. reading that question. Can you hear me now? Yes, timelines can collapse. That happens all the time. Um, there's a... It's hard to explain, honestly, but, like, stuff changes all the time. That's what causes the Mandela effects, like, all of that. James, maybe you should step out of this room and then step back in or something. Is the audio that bad? 
because I, I'm controlling the live stream. Um, I think maybe John might have to do that. Because audience members, can you hear me? Hello, can the audience hear me? Okay, I get a yes. I can't hear you. Okay. Um, hold on. <laughs> this is so... <laughs> Okay, well, I think he probably got them. Hopefully, he got the message and he's coming. Hopefully, he'll come back. Um, but uh, yeah, so let's see here. Uh, questions. Uh, uh, put your light around you. Um, let's see here. Both are coming through. Um, any other questions anybody has? Are there any planets with life in the Stone Age? Good question, Jose. So, those are called prim worlds, and there are a lot of prim worlds out there, and there is uh, um, a law of non-interference. However, I really don't think Dark Fleet really cares about these laws, but there is other councils and other federations out there other than Dark Fleet, which monitor everything Dark Fleet does. So um, in some regards, there are some rules being imposed on them through that means there. And uh, John, are you able to hear me now? Yes. Okay. Are yeah. there any planets with life in the Stone Age? Yeah, tons. And did uh, d is Dark Fleet just allowed to go to go there, like in the the movie Avatar, where they have a advanced space race go there, the Stone Age planet, and just take over resources? Can they do that? Yeah, they can. And there's no like federation or higher councils that put pose or impose restrictions on that for interfering. Well, I mean, there are, but, like, people get away with breaking laws all the time, you know? <laughs> like, it's unfortunate and it's fucked up, but that's the way it is. So do um, people, like, humans go to these planets and portray themselves, these Stone Age planets, portray themselves as gods? Sometimes, yeah. Okay, well, that's going to be a lot of really weird karma for them but i guess they'll learn their lessons eventually yeah okay um any other good questions okay how do we know if we are part of the ssp twinkle starlights so um what are some of the symptoms or i say symptoms or signs that you were part of these programs uh, okay, are you of the correct type of heritage? Like, do you have German, Native American, or Japanese heritage? Uh, are you either RH negative or the child of an RH negative person? Do you have weird dreams about aliens or the military that you don't think are really just dreams? Like, that sort of thing. All right. Sorry about that siren. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> yeah, it's just more targeting. Yeah. Okay, so let's see here. Well, what else we got here? Um, some uh, question is about Black U. Somebody wants to know, what is Black U? It's an AI nanite goo that... It makes you essentially a Terminator. It makes your IQ go through the roof. It gives you superhuman strength, but at the expense of your humanity. It, to the point where the only emotions you can feel are anger and arousal. Okay. So um, also, King James, I want to mention that uh, Black Goo was originally created to terraform worlds. So the problem is, is that when it gets out, and uh, it's supposed to, it needs a, a programming set, if, and if it goes out and becomes sentient, it can create a lot of problems. But uh, yeah, it takes away your your ability to have connections to God, so you, your IQ goes way up from uh, the average IQ. What about 100? You said about 150 is the average compared to here on planet Earth. Yeah. Um, and, and the breakaway, and then from there, it would double or triple your IQ. Mm -hmm. So you'd be really smart and cunning. However, you wouldn't have the ability to love. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So, um, do you have any information about this craft the Germans were working on in the 1800s that Tesla helped? It would have to be the late 1800s if Tesla is involved. But three of them went to Mars. So this would be uh, this would probably be what before Project Mayflower. Yeah, Pro be... Project Mayflower was in the 60s, so 1960s. So this. Uh... I know a little about it. Um, I think they sent out their first three craft. Um, one of them did go to Mars. One of them went to Titan. One of them went to the moon. Um, so, yeah. All right. So... I'm going to share my PowerPoint just one more time. So this is the Sonoro Aero Club. Was this um, – so these were people – there were Prussian scientists that came from – and this was around 1850. They moved, they relocated to the area around Sonora, California, where they were creating these uh, craft under um, – so here the Solomon Andrews. This mm -hmm. is the Aeron made in flight. It was June 1st, 1863. So here's a good – so, you know, if, th if this stuff is in the history here on planet Earth, how come the Smithsonian won't even mention it? You know, so that just shows you everything's controlled. If you go to yeah. the Smithsonian Museum, the Aerospace Museum in Washington, D.C., they should at least have an exhibit early, you know, but they won't mention this stuff. No. And then we got Solomon Andrews. Um, was this connected? Oh, because this will be Solar Warden and later Project Mayflower. But um, yeah. But this, that's probably not what this is connected to what Iron Bear is asking. Because this didn't go to probably Mars. No, probably not. However, you did say there are American colonies out there. A oh, few. yeah. And uh, did you ever visit any of those American colonies? Mm-hmm. Yeah, plenty of them. Uh, Were, do they have a very American type of feeling to them? Like a bunch of, uh, what you know, um, urban sprawl and... Mm -hmm. that in the architecture was it looks yeah like. a lot of them are replicas of american cities so yeah so cool question why disclosure who's leading this up why are so many people disclosing because we don't have a choice yeah we can they, they probably just want just like they enslave in the breakaway they keep up they want us enslaved here yeah they want to take more of our rights away and then have this two-tier system of haves and have-nots where the rich and elite control everything everybody else yeah licks as, up. Licks their... as irritating as i'm disclosing this partly because partly because someone was stealing my story i'm not going to say who but someone was stealing parts of my story that i had told them in confidence and partly because like i want this info out there like humanity, if humanity knew what was going on and we were able to unite, we could be quite something. So in the, uh, Ashru, oh, is it Ashrutu religion? They believe in Valhalla. Yeah. Um, Asatru. So, Asatru. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you think this place actually exists? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay well, I don't think I'm qualified to answer that. Okay, well, well, we'll just move on then. Um, let's see here. Oh, he's talking about the station, Valhalla. Oh, the, yeah, you're, you're right. Or she, she's talking about that. Um, so, so that is actually one of these, um, like a spinning space space station they built. Um, mm -hmm. was it wasn't it like Warner? Was it Warner von Braun that, or who who was it? This the NASA scientist that was working on that. Yeah. Although it was actually developed, if you look up that des that design, it was actually first conceived of in like 1905 by a Russian scientist. So, uh, yeah, the Valhalla, it's around 40 miles across on the outside. On the inside, they used basement universe technology, which is... The only way to explain that is they can make something bigger on the inside than the outside. And so when they did that, they made that station, um, it's like 40 miles across on the outside. On the inside, it's like 200 miles across.
and they moved it. That station was moved. Yeah, exactly that design. It was moved from Orion to the Pleiades somewhere. I I know another person who said it was Tigetta, so mm -hmm. we can go with that. Well, I think we're going to bring you on again uh, in the few um, in a future episode. We can because you have a lot of memories about this station, right? Oh Correct? yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, all a lot of these drawings that we see, vintage drawings from the 1950s, showing all uh, the future, of the secret space program, um, were actually put into production. They just they told the public, "Oh, we're not going to go back to the moon. It doesn't matter." But you know, it actually did. They mm -hmm. they did all this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. James, if it's all right, I'd like to wrap it up. Yes, I understand. I'm okay. Really cold. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and um, uh, your con so your contact information, uh, your emails in the uh, description. Oh, um, by the way, you did kind of mess it up. It's J E W B, not J E D B. Oh, my email. Okay, um, we'll, we'll be sure to get. Uh, what did you say? J E W B T X. So it's B B T X. Mm -hmm. No, W B. No, J, J E W. J E B W T X. J E W B T X. J E W B T X. Yes, at. Yeah, I got it. Okay, okay. well, I'll, I'll update that and we'll also get the, the spelling of the ho Hochler. Okay. The heck, Hochler fixed. But um, yeah, there you go, everybody. Thank you all for listening. Um, so until February, I'm probably going to be uploading it to this channel. Um, also, be sure to subscribe over to Rumble. Uh, I've got many more interviews I want to upload, but it's all um, because of censorship. It's just it is what it is. But uh, yeah, check that out. Be sure to subscribe to um, I guess this channel. You're on <laughs> if you're on here until um, February. Uh, then I'll, I, I'll try to migrate back to the other one, but um, be sure to go to super soldier talk. You can, uh, uh, if you want to make a donation to help pay for uh, the, the live stream and all that and go there and make a donation. You can also go to my website, uh, neological tech.com, get a copy of my book. Um, I have a list, of a lot of the, the, the companies in the breakaway and um, John was helping me on a, a section or two on there. So there y'all have it, everybody. Thank you all for listening in, and we'll all see you later. Okay, so, thanks for having me. Yeah, so let me – hold on. Um, okay, I don't know how to get rid of Christy. Let's see. I'm going to – hold on. I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to – yeah, there we go. Got rid of that. So we'll all see you all later. Bye, everybody. Bye. Please consider supporting Super Soldier Talk by purchasing your own Neo Meditation device. Your Neo Meditation device will help you reduce stress, integrate trauma, enhance intuition, enhance clairvoyance, and enhance creativity. Get yours now at www.neologicaltech.com.